Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we have been moving on to trying to do something with the chemical kinetics data that we have uh, been used to so far by uh, trying to combine it with the thermal information that it goes with that means there is a heat transfer that is associated with the chemical reactions that we need to worry about and uh, so can we put them together. It is possible to put them together in some simple frameworks because we do not want to get uh, involved in uh, the flow processes and the mixing processes. So the first thing that we will try to assume is is it possible for us to actually neglect mixing and uh, typically when we well, what do you mean by saying neglect mixing is um, that maybe mixing is not there it is not important it is not uh, to a significant extent or it is there a whole lot and almost a lot of things are actually getting instantaneously mixed which is actually closer to truth. Okay, in reality if you are trying to adopt these kinds of models simplified models where we are only interested in combining chemical and thermal processes without bothering about flow and mixing then typically you are looking at situations where the mixing is almost instantaneous right so you do not have to worry about it okay. Uh, we will try to qualify this uh, as when we are exactly neglecting versus when it is exactly instantaneous as we go along particularly for the plug flow reactor where we are now could be looking at a simple flow description for the plug flow but for most other parts um, <coughs> we should not have to worry about the flow because it is too complicated let us not worry about it either right. So it is not as if like you do not really have a flow but when, the, when there is a flow it is too complicated for us to worry about maybe, maybe it is not important for us to worry about that level of complication is it possible for us to deal without having to uh, take into account flow description as much as we can and also by neglecting mixing. If you try to adopt this kind of a framework where you are disregarding flow and mixing then we have roughly broadly um, two kinds of approaches one is what is called as fixed mass systems uh, or uh, open flow systems. Uh, so in the fixed mass um, reactors our, our uh, goal is we now have a fixed mass of uh, material what started out to be reactants in the, in the beginning uh, for the same mass of the reactants the reactants now proceed to become products right. So uh, in, in a chemical reaction the mass does not change so it is the same mass that we are talking about but originally we started out having reactants and later on we are now having products. When we first started adopting chemical, thermodyn chemical thermodynamics right when we are looking at the equilibrium thermodynamics of the chemical reactions we started by talking about initial reactants and final products but we never really worried about the time evolution between the two okay. For all we cared this could have taken ages in reality combustion reactions take uh, take a jiffy it does not take a lot of time okay but whatever it is we would like to see how this evolution happens between initial reactants to final products through maybe intermediates right if you are able to take into account the detailed chemistry as much detail as we would like to do right. So this is what we are trying to do now as opposed to what we were trying to do earlier on with our equilibrium thermodynamics approach okay. So in, the, in this sense this is not an equilibrium uh, situation at all we are looking at a, a set of reactants that might be in equilibrium initially. But you now look at departure from equilibrium as the reaction commences and, and then we now get into a situation where you finally get products which could be in equilibrium ultimately right. Previously we looked at only these two end states but now we are looking through these states. So this is obviously going to be a problem that describes um, uh, changes as, a, as an evolution in time therefore we need to have a time description of it what we will actually be looking for is. Um, ordinary differential equations in time for typically temperature and concentrations of uh, of all the species okay. So these are the two things that we should be looking for. 
On the other hand in the, in the open flow reactors we could afford to make an assumption of steady state which is, which is, which is more convenient for us we do not have to worry about evolution in time and that, that means everything that is happening is happening at all times okay. Uh, so if you now try to do that then your time derivatives in your ODEs will go away and if you had ODEs in time and you had to get rid of the derivatives you now are stuck with only uh, algebraic equations you see and that is actually like a uh, direct consequence of uh, uh, applying this kind of formulation without the time derivatives you now get, rid, get, get, get to algebraic equations which, which, is, which is the model called the Wells third reactor or WSR. Um, and uh, 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 but but you could still also do some more things like for maybe you say well I know how to solve ODEs okay I, I have done this here uh, we are not going to solve the ODEs but let us suppose that we, we formulate the problem in the ODEs and we suppose that we can solve the ODEs uh, well if we, can, if we could solve ODEs in time why can't I solve ODEs in space. So if we have to solve ODEs in space it is ordinary differential equation in space that means I can allow for only one spatial variable right that simply means that I can now begin to account for one dimensional variation in, in space okay. So I could adopt like a one dimensional approach which will lead to the plug flow reactor. So you will now have ODEs in space so you will now have a d by dx kind of derivatives showing up uh, over here in this. So to picturize what we are talking about. Uh, in, the, in the case of uh, the fixed mass reactors you could do this as a either a constant pressure reactor or a constant volume reactor ideally this is this is idealization as you can see this is this, all these are idealizations right. So or, or the, these are idealizations that are effectively simplifications so in a simplified system um, we now think about like a constant pressure fixed mass reactor uh, so you could think about a, 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 a template. Um, geometry which is like a piston cylinder arrangement where the, the, the piston has a constant weight in a uh, um, the what do you call uh, spatially invariant gravitational field. Huh? So we have to uh, say that therefore we, we now say that this is going to be exerting a constant pressure the pressure is constant but the volume can change. So as, as the temperature uh, changes with whatever heat that you are going to try to remove out of the chemical reactions the, the volume can change um, um, so this is this is uh, volume as a function of time there. So here our interest as I said is we are now trying to write ODEs in temperature and the concentrations of the species. So we are looking for time evolution of temperature and time evolution of concentrations of the species okay. So if you now started out with uh, certain species like C i naught for i going from 1 to capital N. Um, and of course we will obviously start with reactants so if you want to number your uh, species as 1 is equal to the first reactant this 2 is equal to the second reactant and so on 1 2 and, and so on will have non zero values but if you now have your n n minus 1 and all those things is like products they would typically have zero values right uh, and typically you know even intermediates will have uh, to start with you will have zero okay so you will have non zero values for reactants and zeros for intermediates and products to, to, to start with for C i 0 and you also can uh, indicate an initial temperature for this and then you now have the clock ticking T greater than 0 and then now you integrate your ODE system uh, in time to get how this evolution happens. As a, as, as a um, offshoot of this you could now also try to find out how the volume changes in time all right and we will go through how to do that. You have a constant uh, volume fixed mass um, reactor where you now just to have a box okay you do not even have a piston that could, that could move back and forth to maintain the constant pressure. So the volume is fixed uh, so the pressure obviously is going to change in time uh, so the, the problem is posed exactly similarly to what we have done before as far as the ODE set is concerned except we will now see some changes in the equations because you are now keeping the volume fixed rather than letting the uh, pressure, pressure fixed and consequently as an offshoot we should be able to also find out how the pressure changes in time. So this is how this problem would be uh, posed. Um, on the other hand if you now look at the open flow uh, reactors the first of which is the Wellstead reactor it is it is in a way is you see a, a counterpart of uh, this that means um, or, or you could say you could say it is a counterpart of either of these as a matter of fact uh, let us not let us not worry about that but there is a lot of flow that is going on inside 
okay which we do not want to worry about that means we will not worry about the spatial variation of things inside how they are actually spatially distributed okay then we are also making the steady state assumption that means we want to actually look at how the system works under steady state conditions right that means we are not looking at a time variation as well okay so what it simply means is this is a model that is going to tell you if I put in reactants of certain concentrations here at a certain temperature okay with mass fluxes for each of those like this summed over, summed over to get you a certain m dot which is constant okay so the mixture m dot is going to be constant throughout the system right from inlet to outlet okay but the but the but the um, individual species m dots could change such that the mixture m dot is constant so sigma mi in uh, over all i will be equal to sigma mi out over all i uh, equal to m dot okay that is the way it, it, this is going to work out the question is if I were to put in these reactants in at this particular temperature right what is it that I am going to get out for a given volume of this that is not a bad problem to think about right so if I have a box and then I am going to put in uh, certain reactants it is it, it, okay for me to expect what, what to get out of this, this box right. So we will find that this is actually pretty useful yeah and I and, will and I'll, I'll explain to you how useful, uh, useful it is in, in different contexts and then as I said you could also allow for some simple flow description and the simple flow description is essentially in a one dimensional sense what we will now allow for is a quasi one dimensional variation okay so quasi means that you will allow for like an area variation to happen along the flow direction largely speaking so your a is equal to a of x that is given right and you now allow for everything to vary as a function of x that means your temperature concentrations density pressure velocity okay because your area is changing the velocity will change below because the velocity changes the pressure changes the pressure changes so the density changes the density changes the temperature changes everything changes because of this all as a function of x nothing in a, nothing as a function of time okay so we will start with reactants as, as, as usual it is a steady state situation so m dot is, 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 is the same we measure things along x direction as, 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 a, as a variation there so this is typically how we are going to deal with these different uh, situations all right so let us let us now look at how to deal with uh, yeah both of these velocity and flux flow reactor yeah which, which one is similar to that uh, the combustor we use in aircraft we I will take up this question after I finish everything okay the answer is the combustor uh, in an aircraft for example is a is a is a combination of about two or three uh, WSRs and PFRs put together in a network <laughs> okay or in other words you could model your combustor that way if, if you do not want to get into actual physical details of uh, how things are distributed and so on we could, we could we could come up with a network in which you know say the primary zone is one WSR the secondary zone is another WSR and the tertiary zone like the dilution zone could be a PSR or a WSR depending upon whether you want the spatial variation or not okay so reality is more complicated than these but these things could now be used as building blocks to create like a network that would simulate the rea reality all right you could think about this as uh, something that can um, that can work uh, easily for like a rocket nozzle for example so this is not a bad idea a, a, a well stirred reactor it many times works well for uh, things like furnaces okay uh, so where, where you have like a feed constant feed and then uh, you have exhaust uh, going out uh, so you, you, you could sometimes or many times as a matter of fact uh, uh, model model those kinds of complicated combustor geometries with, with a WSR liquid rocket, uh, rockets yes sure that is possible okay um, we, we will look at why we need to have networks for like a, a like an aircraft aircraft combustor because we, we have a uh, primary zone where you are having a stoichiometric combustion first and then you have like a
a, a, a fuel lean combustion next and then you now have a tertiary zone which is not too much of reactions and so on. So uh, that is the reason why you need to have a, a network otherwise you could actually have uh, uh, for, for a crude uh, approximation you could have a combustor replaced by a w, WSR that is fine okay. So uh, right so our goal here is to, is to find evolution of uh, T C i and v given initial conditions in them that is uh, um, T naught C i naught v naught. So this is what is called as a initial value problem. IVP. So how would you do this? Um, essentially, the, the broad outline for any of these approaches is as follows: as far as species concentration is concerned, we have to now apply conservation of mass of individual species. Okay. As far as temperature is concerned, we have to look at a global energy balance. So, of course, what will happen is you will find that each of these equations depends on all the variables that means e equation for the ith species mass balance will depend on all concentrations uh, concentrations of all species ci and t and the global energy balance will not only depend on t but also all the cis so you now get a system of equations right so this is what we will do and it is more straightforward for us to think about a global energy balance in terms of the first law of thermodynamics okay. So you just have to apply the first law of thermodynamics right away. So energy balance is first law of thermodynamics that means Q minus Q dot minus W dot equals uh, M du dt. Now this is treated as given, right? In a sense, if you think about it, if you were to, if you are a partial differential equations expert, and you were like uh, raring to go on trying to get multi-dimensional spatial variation as well as temporal variation simultaneously all together right you will now say this is a box with these boundaries and then there are like boundary conditions that need to be given I need to tell what should be the heat flux here what should be the heat flux here on this wall what should be the heat flux on this wall and, and, and so on separately right but here we decided that we will not worry about any spatial variation right we are looking at only temporal variation so we are looking for ODEs in time and therefore this is like a some sort of like a collective boundary condition so it is like what is the net heat heat flux across all the surfaces okay so this is this is supposed to be like a given you can, you can think of this as a collective bc you don't require a boundary condition at all here but if you were to have boundary conditions in a real problem how to convert that into a given uh, property here is what you're looking for in this so I would say collective BC within quotes um, now we have to look at what is W dot uh, therefore uh, well it is not very difficult for us to fathom I mean W dot is essentially going to be like the expansion work right so let us look at how, how that uh, comes about so enthalpy of H equal to uh, U plus PV 
right. Now most of the time uh, in fluid mechanics or gas dynamics you would not really worry about what this H is okay but we are dealing with a multi component system that means a mixture of species right and then in addition to that we also have chemical reactions going on so we will have to actually distinguish between um, standard heat of formation and sensible enthalpy for each of those species. So this is pretty much now going to actually grow like a genie out of a bottle soon okay anytime you see a very um, innocuous H in, in your combustion class uh, be prepared to see that it is going to now just grow like a genie right because it is now going to be taking care of all the species in there and for each of those species you have to look at the standard heat of formation and its sensible enthalpy so we, we, we will we will do that soon okay um, so uh, so long as we are not we, we are more innocent at the, at the moment right we could simply write this as uh, du over dt equal to dh over dt minus p dv over dt p is constant so we do not have to worry about changing uh, it is changing with time um, so this is constant pressure constant pressure now <coughs> then uh, since since work is uh, only in the form of expansion right we can easily write that W dot divided by M that is the rate of work per unit mass of the system is equal to P times dv over dt right so from here you now put put things together um, we already have du over dt is equals q dot minus w dot divided by m w dot divided by m is already p dv over dt and then we have du over dt is equal to dh over dt minus p dv over dt so putting putting everything together this simply means that q dot divided by m is equal to dh over dt this is something that we already seen earlier okay when did we see this the moment we actually define heat of reaction so when we said heat of reaction is the heat that is released uh, in, a, in a chemical reaction which started out at a, sta at a certain temperature and pressure and came back to the same temperature and pressure is what we said okay and at that time we noticed that the heat that is released during this process is the same as the enthalpy change okay and that is the reason why to, to find the adiabatic flame temperature at constant pressure we were equating enthalpies of the reactants and products that is the initial state to the final state and this, this exactly says that Q dot is the heat that is released um, in the, from the system okay and per unit mass h is actually per unit mass that is the reason why we have to divide by mass here okay small h is per unit mass we, we, I, I, will, I will explain this uh, notation pretty soon it is going to get a little bit more complicated as I said right uh, so the, the chain so q dot is the one that is making it equal to dh over dt if it were simply q that means you do not have to worry about the rate of heat that is going out it is a total heat over whatever time uh, then you will simply have h okay so this this is primarily because it is a constant pressure process that means in a constant pressure process the specific heat heat uh, flow rate is equal to the rate of change of enthalpy okay so this this comes about mainly because of constant pressure I will contrast this with what you will get for q dot by m in the constant volume case intuitively we should expect that this should contribute only to the internal energy change because the pressure work is forbidden in a in a constant uh, volume situation you do not have a you do not have room to expand right. So we will be able to see that contrast 
in the first law of thermodynamics when you apply this uh, to the constant volume case next but at the moment we will uh, stick to the constant pressure case now H is now equal to H over M okay now this is the total specific enthalpy this is the total enthalpy So when you say specific that means it is per unit mass okay the next thing I am going to say is something called molar specific okay when I do not say mass specific then it is implicitly per unit mass if I have to say per unit mole then I will have to specifically say molar specific okay so at the moment this is mass specific regardless of how you want to count your enthalpy okay the total enthalpy you want to now say mass times the specific enthalpy will give you the total enthalpy or number of moles times the molar enthalpy will also give you the total enthalpy the total enthalpy is the same right now so you are now going to bring in the molar enthalpy uh, the, the molar specific enthalpy so that is um, given by sigma I equals 1 to n n i h i divided by m where h i is capital h i is the molar specific enthalpy of species i and n i of course is uh, number of moles of species i number I am sorry number of moles species i or ith species whichever way you want to call it. Now see we use a capital H i for this molar specific enthalpy all right we will not really worry about a total molar specific enthalpy at all then so we do not have to worry about what, what symbol we will use for it okay. So this is the, this is the uh, notation here for, for, for what we are doing now you let us let us suppose we now differentiate this so differentiate differentiate uh, differentiate this obviously with respect to time we are looking at what happens with respect to time. So the mass is constant so you can happily take that out the denominator so this is constant that is what uh, fixed mass systems are all about but unfortunately both the total both the number of moles of each species as well as the um, molar specific enthalpy of, of the species are changing in time okay uh, why would they change well, why, why would well the number of moles changes because the reaction is happening okay so you start out with some so many number of moles of reactants at the, at the, at the end of the reactant uh, you do not have them so that means that that has changed right and, and in the process some, some number of moles of products that did not exist before has been produced and so on so that is obvious why would the capital H I change temperature okay so capital H I the next thing is we are going to write this as the standard heat of formation plus the sensible enthalpy the sensible enthalpy depends on temperature the so temperature is going to change in time as a reaction happens therefore the sensible enthalpy changes therefore the molar specific enthalpy is going to change so you have to take in account the change uh, of both with respect to time so um, that is uh, sigma i I'm going to I'm going to get tired of writing i sigma i equal to 1 to n every time uh, so I'm just simply going to say sigma i um, and then that is uh, H i d n i over d t plus sigma i um, n i d h i over d t okay for ideal gas h 
Hi is a function of temperature only and that is the expression that we were um, talking about uh, that is it has it it a um, standard heat deformation and the sensible enthalpy and the sensible enthalpy is the one that is changing with temperature okay. So if you are now looking at the derivative of this with respect to temperature it is the derivative of the sensible enthalpy with respect to temperature at a constant pressure okay what is that okay therefore dhi over dt is do hi over do t at constant pressure dt over dt right so this is cpi dt where this is now molar specific heat heat uh, uh, um, um, of species I molar specific heat at constant pressure for species I that means if in case you did not think about this every species is going to have its own specific heat there is something that of course we noticed during the equilibrium calculations for adiabatic flame temperature okay just wanted to remind you second thing we are using a capital C for molar specific heat to go with the capital H for the molar specific enthalpy all right for the for the specific specific heat right uh, that is per unit mass so this is this this would be joules per mole Kelvin all right that would be the SI units for this. The, the, the standard one is joules per kg Kelvin we will use a small c over there okay. So, so we have that and next so we are trying to evaluate these, these terms here so next we have 1 over v dni over dt equal to dci over dt equal to omega i this is how we defined these things if you remember right so in our run up to looking at the law of mass action this is how things were defined for you all right. So that is that is beginning to look at combining chemical kinetics and thermal information you see so this is coming from your kinetics so your omega i is actually a function of c i comma t you have that huge expression you see you remember right that is like sigma i equals 1 to um, capital M for the number of reactions. Um, new new i k double prime minus new i k single prime and blah 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 some huge expression which had all the ci's thrown in there and the temperature in the Arrhenius expressions for each of those reactions right that is an ugly looking expression there we, we, are, we are spared of that because I am not going to write, write this out but, but it is there with you in your notes okay now therefore dni over dt is equal to v omega i all right so plug these there plug these above um, above is here we can now say dh over dt is equal to q dot by m we can plug that for the dh over dt and for dni over dt I am going to plug v omega i and for D capital H I over DT I am going to plug CPI DT over DT right that is all I am going to do does not look like a big problem uh, the M gets cancelled you have a Q dot over M you have a 1 over M so the M gets cancelled so we get Q 
q dot equal to um, q, okay let us just write q dot over m equals 1 over m sigma uh, h i v omega i plus sigma n i capital C p i d t over d t. So in this we notice that of course the sigma is over i okay I am I am even dropping that okay um, but v does not depend on i okay that is that is common for all these species so I can pull this out of the summa summation similarly dt dt over dt does not depend on i so I can pull this out of the summation m gets cancelled so considering these I can go with q dot uh, equal to um, v times sigma h i omega i plus d t over d t sigma n i c p i further step q dot divided by v is equal to sigma h i omega i plus d t over d t sigma n i divided by v c p i what is n i divided by v number of moles of species i per per volume is a concentration okay the molar concentration. So this is q dot divided by v equals sigma h i omega i plus d t over d t sigma c i capital C p i. So from here we can get d t over d t equals q dot divided by v minus sigma capital H i omega i divided by sigma C i capital C p i. So we will call this equation 1. So what we have achieved here is to write d t over uh, d t in terms of the concentrations and temperature is the temperature showing up here the temperature is showing up okay h i contains the temperature through the sense of enthalpy where h i equals h f i naught plus integral t ref to t um, capital C p i d t okay and omega i equals omega i of c i small c i comma t okay that is the same as what we have written there. So we, we now have a fairly ugly ODE one ODE for temperature okay in terms of c i and t. So now you look at how the c i is going to change right. So you can get your volume so one of the things that is missing here is volume so we can get the volume um, volume V is uh, obtained by mass conservation that is uh, that is V equals M divided by sigma c i w i where w i is the molecular weight of uh, species i and this is given okay fixed given okay you know you know what is the size of your system from your m from which you can estimate your volume which can be plugged in here I have already told you q dot is given and, and, and so you, you, you have an equation there. So the evolution equations for uh, for composition for C i that is um, is obtained <coughs> by consideration of 
what chemical reactions are going on so the CI is going to change in time so we should be able to get the change in CI because of um, chemical reaction what else what else is actually causing a change in CI CI is molar concentration and molar concentration means number of moles per unit volume okay so let us suppose that you do not have any chemical reactions but you had a bunch of species inside your piston cylinder arrangement would the concentrations change the pressure is fixed but something else the volume changes so if the volume changes will the concentration change yes that is what concentration means okay if, if everything is concentrated in a small volume then the concentration is high that is what concentration means <laughs> okay so many times we just simply forget our English right <laughs> so the so evolution equations for CI is obtained by consideration of chemical reactions chemical reaction and change in volume right so DC over DT is and I over V and this is minus and I over V squared dV over dt. Now keep in mind we have already noticed that this is nothing but omega I all right so this is uh, omega i therefore dc i over dt equal to omega i minus ci divided by v and i over v is ci so one of the v's gets out there if you now write things in terms of ci dv over dt the next thing we are going to do the constant volume case we can easily see that dv over dt will be 0 so this does not exist so you will simply have only this right so I am saying all these things so that we can we can uh, ease that part. Now this is not uh, uh, easy because we know that omega i is a function of c i and t all right and then we have to look at what dv over dt is. So consider equation of state um, PV equal to sigma Ni times or U T So this implies that uh, 1 over V dV over dt equals 1 over sigma Ni sigma dNi over dt plus 1 over T dt over dt right. So if you now substitute here. DCI over DT equal to omega I minus CI sigma omega I divided by sigma CI plus 1 over T DT over DT. So this is your second equation now if you are unhappy with the dt over dt showing up in the expression for dci over dt okay because it does not look like a nice set of ODEs you are free to plug in here plug this in there 
and make it look a little bit more ugly so long as you are happy with all the derivatives showing up only on the left hand side all right it does not make um, substitution of this there does not make them dependent on each other they are independent equations they are still independent equations all right. So now have two equations and uh, well I should not say two equations I, I take that back this is n equations okay so this is I equals 1 to n n is the number of species so number of species could be quite large for the hydrogen system hydrogen oxygen system you are looking at maybe thinking about like 6 to 9 species okay uh, including intermediates of course but for something like a carbon um, hydrocarbon oxidation right uh, if you are now looking at hydrocarbon oxidation uh, by air that means air has nitrogen and then you want to ha allow for the nitrogen to participate in the reactions by um, forming oxides of nitrogen okay at elevated temperatures you are looking at maybe about 400 reactions and about 100 species okay so this is uh, this is this is very very difficult equations okay uh, so you are now looking at about 101 equations to, to reckon with all right so happy solving <laughs> yeah but we, 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 we pose the problem problem is of the form dt over dt equals a function of ci comma t dci over dt is another function of ci comma t i equals 1 to n given t of uh, t equal to 0 equals t naught um, and uh, ci of uh, T equal to 0 equals ci naught um, we also can obtain v of t from um, dv function of ci comma t okay once you get your once you solve this you get your ci and t as a function of temp time you can get your volume evolution okay so this is how we will solve this problem